got two plate. seconds to get his and get out of my house. I'm bored. Me too. Mario, can you please crawl down to the computer and signal to the creator to watch something fun? Okie dokie. Kobe, go with them. Let's go. <laughs> the creator is coming. Hurry up. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, God. Everyone look normal. Hmm. Oh, look at that. A new season of 1,000 Pound Sisters is coming up. Might as well watch it. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel where I talk about internet drama. Reality show weirdos. Reality show weirdos that are in internet drama. Break it all down for you and condense it into a very overly edited video two to three times a week. So if you are interested in that, please hit the subscribe button. We are trying to get to 750,000 subscribers. And we are almost there as in you and me and this channel because there's nobody else in this room unless you guys got something to tell me about. Okay, so one of our favorite shows are back with our favorite original chubby bunny challenge eater YouTube duo. And they're back for their fifth season of 1000 Pound Sisters. And I am extremely excited. I know you guys are excited for this one because as much as TLC thinks I personally like to watch fat people at their lowest of low and uh, die, I don't love to see that. And Tammy has finally got herself together this season. But even though when it comes to her weight being intact finally, the other parts of Tammy and the family's life is not. I've been in rehab for 14 months. So you guys remember when Tammy, she only made it in rehab for what, a few weeks? Now this woman has made it over a year. This is huge for Tammy. I get like a little bit of a, a little bit of flutter in my chest, in my stomach with like, I'm just so proud of her and I'm so happy she proved so many people wrong, including me. I love being proved wrong in this instance that she's going to die, right? Are you like, are you one of those people that just wanna watch somebody pass away? If you are, you're a sick individual. But now that my Drake is out, I get to go home. Doesn't it feel good, Tammy, to not have that like whole thing in your throat all the time? And I'm not like a medical in the medical field and I never looked this up. I don't know how those things work. Medical things really freak me out. I can't even look at someone get a shot, much less a thing put in their throat. I don't even want to understand what's going on. So me not knowing the process, what's going on, like, like how do you, it literally just freaks me out when I keep thinking about it. Like how do you eat? How do you breathe? Does food get stuck in it? Do you take it out at night and there's a hole in your throat? I don't know anything about it and I refuse to look it up because it freaks me out and my body goes numb when I do. But with all that being said, I'm just overjoyed that it's gone for her. It must feel like taking off a bra that you've been strapped into for years. I think. Don't educate me. I'm not even gonna read your paragraph. This season on 1,000 Pound Sisters. Ooh, so there's Caleb. Okay, so like we said, Caleb is going to be in the season. And as you know, unless you're late to this, he did end up passing away and it was really sad. And if I remember, it freaked Tammy out a lot. It was kind of a bit of a wake up call. A very sad wake up call, but I mean, it, it'll, if your family member dies from obesity and you watch that that journey, it it, help, it wakes you up. Especially if they're getting limbs removed and things like that. It's a very slow, sad, and creepy, upsetting journey. They're not gonna approve me to go home. I can't imagine walking out of this place without my husband. Fallout though does make me wonder, Miss Tammy. And you know, I, I would personally think that she would have no problem with a long distance relationship. All of the relationships that we saw on her, or on the show were all long distance before. I think two or three of them had to fly on in to feed her a whole pan of lasagna. So it's just so interesting that she couldn't handle this, but at the same time, they met when Tammy came into the facility at her absolute heaviest and uh, lowest, probably mentally. And Tammy, as we can see, she's grown mentally. She reduced her size. Caleb didn't. And obviously that's going to cause some distance, whether or not you are long distance or if you're in the same facility. I mean, ask many married people. But I lost almost 300 pounds. See, 300 pounds? That, so she lost the whole test holiday. Everybody, I need you to clap. And... I'm ready to conquer the world. 
bitches! Bitch! Damn, what's okay, up with you so long? So Tammy might have lost weight, but she did not lose that big old sassy personality and gained just a little bit of strength. If I could just run this under some hot water. You got two children. I thought you knew how to handle a pickle. Please, the bigger pickles. I'm glad the SEX jokes are staying. I love learning about the girls' intimate life. I am very nosy. I welcome it to an extent. Okay, sometimes they be getting descriptive. Put on a trash bag. Y'all yeah, like dumb as hell. All right, I'm gonna just say it. This might piss off a few people, but just stay with me through this little journey. Why do fat people put trash bags on them? Because I bet you anything, Tammy and, and Chris and her family, they are doing this to sweat. Oh. Get ready, bitches. Y'all gonna sweat today. See, there it is. Here's the thing. You're just gonna sweat because you are obese. Not every fat person sweats. I get it, some of you just don't. I don't understand that. I'm someone that sweats like a pig. And the heavier you are, the more you sweat. When I was heavier, I would sweat all the time. But it always cracks me up when I see obese people do this because why do they do it? They think that they're going to just drop tons of fat. I was one of those people who thought that, just a tip, you're not going to burn a significant amount of calorie putting a bag over your body. The bigger you are, the more filled you have, the more you're gonna sweat already. It just doesn't make much sense putting a bag over your whole body and hopes that you're gonna burn more calories. It's just kind of a waste of time if you're trying to burn more calories. The only people that it really does help is someone that has to make weight, like a wrestler or a bodybuilder. Me and Misty's been going to see Dr. Smith. If Amanda and Misty get approved, the whole family will have had weight loss surgery. Oh my God, everyone's just going under the knife. The whole family, they need a family discount at this point. Do we got a family discount? See, that's what I'm saying. Usually companies have that whole, you know, refer these, this amount of people to my practice and you'll get 20% off your next tummy tuck. Gage, come on. No. I am very overwhelmed, distressed out, and Michael ain't doing Ooh. I forgot about the divorce, the breakup, the, the end of the relationship of Michael and Amy. I know whenever I talk about this, my very small amount of men, well, like the straight men, I don't think the, the gay followers get triggered over this when I talk about this topic, but from what I hear all over TikTok, on Reddit posts, with some study, and just with the older traditional women in my life, which by the way, every single one is divorced and they left their husbands because the husbands don't do shit when they come home. That seemed to be the problem with my parents and many people that do have these traditional, like traditional wife, traditional husband. I'm not saying it's bad, but what I am saying is a lot of people that are older that have been in that say that it gets old pretty quickly. The husband's duty is to just go to work, provide, that's all fine and dandy, but when he comes home, he can just do nothing and decompress while his lovely wife serves him and continues her day of taking care of the kids, hearing them whine constantly through the day, making their food, cleaning up the house, making her husband's food, feeding the kids, cleaning up after the kids, cleaning up after the husband, putting the kids to bed and cleaning up some more. I'm just exhausted all the time because I'm trying to take care of two boys and take care of the house. And then eventually the housewife breaks down. She loses it and is tired of constantly asking for help a moment. Please just five minutes so I can take a sh alone without little hands pulling on me. You have a husband that is perfectly capable of taking care of these kids for you to have a moment. I feel like I'm at my breaking point. And then there's no budge from the husband from actually helping around the house, and then she just divorces his ass, and the dude is standing there like, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, look at Michael. The sister is yelling at his face, and he looks like freaking Patrick Star when you're trying to explain anything to him. Nothing's going in. I don't get it. Ladies who want to be a housewife and the uprising of house husband. The housewife house husband occupation is a 24 seven job. It's not nine to five. It doesn't stop unless you have a wonderful, wife or husband that comes home from work and gives you a break, which by the way, I see that with a lot of my millennial friends, friends and it looks so wonder, wonder, wonderfully organized. And they seem so much less stressed than my friends or my people in my family who are older that took literally all the work for, for the home. Every aspect of my life is chaotic because I have no support. If you don't fix the things that are wrong, it's not gonna end well for you. I don't know how many times we saw Amy complain that she needs help, support, you know, hold the baby while she just takes a break and Michael's just in the corner eating cornbread and barbecue. Give her her money. I ain't giving Yeah, that's the other thing. I was talking to my mom 
about this because I'm very nosy and wondered what was the conversation like when he and my dad met and they discussed after, you know, they get married, can my mom stay home and not work? And she said something my dad said is, don't worry, I'll provide everything. You'll never have to work. But what he meant was that she didn't have to bring in money. He'll take care of that part, but, but she will have to work for free to live in his house. As a chef, a caretaker, a mother, a maid, a sex doll, and a nanny. And you cannot critique your boss. Don't do that because once you do, that's when all hell breaks loose, which is what happened when she started questioning him and asking for help. And what did he do? Start docking that pay or controlling the money situation like Michael's trying to in the small clip. You got two seconds to give her the debit card. No. She gonna took off her jacket. Michael, give her the damn money. I've seen you sitting there eating while your kids go insane. He's also never coming along on these family workouts. He did not train to take down two large, angry, and aggravated women. He's Call got two plate. seconds to get his get out of my house. But I'm usually not super excited, but I'm so nosy. I need to understand what this whole fight is about. Like, is this one of these stereotypical fights where the woman finally asks for help around the house and then the man's like, oh my God, how dare you? I ain't done. You get out of my house. Make me. Are they gonna fight? This is the new drama, you guys. It's no longer Tammy, lose weight, you're gonna die. Now it's Slayton family drama and divorce, which is super trendy right now. Divorce, which I see a lot of people saying, it's millennials you can't stay together. When I looked up the statistics, it's actually boomer women divorcing their husband, which is very interesting because we have talked so much about the red pill people talking about traditional wives and the women back then knew how to act, but those women who knew how to act learned how to use technology, have found TikTok, and telling all the younger women that they got tired real quick like Amy damn I didn't even know Tammy was in the room this is the most you know silent I've ever seen Tammy she's just sequestered and tucked into the corner I got me man on the phone good for her balancing it out a bit two loudies one person calling the police put your hands on me put me out back up no I didn't know coming home the world was gonna fall apart well, that's the trailer, you know? Gone are the days when we sat back, watched him go to the doctor, weigh in, he would tell her, you gained weight, you're gonna die, and then she'd go home, find a new boyfriend, eat a whole tray of lasagna, and then the cycle would continue. Those days are hopefully past us. Now, it's all of this. And for some reason, I'm just a tad bit more intrigued in this storyline rather than watching Tammy die storyline. So I'm glad this randomly popped up. I'm very excited to watch it, and I hope you guys are too. And if you are, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and we will get to that once it comes out. If you want to just chill with me some more and watch more videos, I became a fat, body positive feminist and went undercover. We also just talked about Amberlynn Reed and Jamie Friend. And of course, Jess Pearly Things, the woman who thinks women shouldn't vote, said 16 year olds are hotter than 25 year olds, got demonetized on YouTube. All those videos are linked below. Come hang out with me a little bit longer. And if you already watched those videos, watch them again. No, I'm just kidding. You get outside and you, you go for a walk. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Wake up, honey, I made you breakfast. Fresh coffee and bagels too. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a bear and a fun. Growing up is just a trap.